Hi, my name is Casey, and welcome to our Kid City lesson for the day. Today, we will learn about how Paul wrote that Christians are joined together by faith in Jesus. Have you ever had a disagreement with a friend or a sibling? I've had many disagreements with people throughout my life, and I've handled some well and others not so well. How did you handle the disagreement? When we disagree with others, we often feel angry or frustrated at the other person. Growing angry is not a very helpful response to a disagreement. Today we will hear about a group of believers in a place called Corinth. They had a lot of disagreements, and Paul wrote them a letter to help them deal with their disagreements in a way that honored God and helped one another. Let's watch the Bible story to find out what happens. Hey everyone, Megan here, and my name is Jesse. Megan, you will not believe what Sam said to me. What did Sam say to you, Jesse? He said that the new Carl, the crazy crocodile video game, is more fun than Koala Karate Squad. Can you believe that? <laughs> uh, no. I mean, Carl the crazy crocodile's nemesis, Tom the terrifying tiger, is scary that he does not have the skills of the koala karate master. Ugh, how can I be friends with someone who thinks Carl the crazy crocodile is better than koala karate squad? Um, I think hearing today's Bible story will be good for you, Jesse. The people at the church in Corinth were arguing with each other. Listen to what Paul had to say to them about getting along. Paul started a church in the city of Corinth. He stayed there a while and then he traveled on to tell more people about the good news of Jesus. Years passed and Paul heard some bad news. The church in Corinth was not doing well. The believers there argued and had many other problems. So Paul decided to write a letter to them. The people in the church should have been like one team working together, but they were divided into different groups. They thought that one teacher was better than the other. One group said, we follow Paul. Another group said, we follow Apollos. A third group said, we follow Peter. A fourth group said, we follow Jesus. Paul said believers should not be divided. Paul asked, who died on the cross for you? It wasn't Paul, it wasn't Apollos, it wasn't Peter, it was Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for you. The people agreed that only Jesus is Lord, so Paul told them that they should get along and love one another. Paul said that people who do not believe in Jesus think the good news about him is silly. He said, friends, think about this. God chose you to be in his family, not because of what you know or who is in your family here on earth, God saves people who trust in Jesus. No one can brag about being saved because it is not something we can earn or make happen. We should only brag about Jesus and what He has done. Paul told believers in the church at Corinth to get along. Paul reminded the people that Jesus saves sinners. Because of Jesus, believers can come together like one big happy family. The believers in Corinth struggled to show one another love. They argued and fought. One thing that they were particularly concerned with was who was the best leader of the church. Some of the Corinthians claimed to follow Paul. Others claimed to follow another Christian leader named Apollos. Still others said that they followed Peter. Paul wrote that Christians are joined together by faith in Jesus. It is true that we are all different. Sometimes we may feel as if the ways that we are different make it so that we cannot get along and show love to one another. 
but everyone who believes in Jesus is a member of the body of Christ. When we focus on the gospel, we can be unified despite our differences. The gospel reminds us of the incredible ways that we are all the same. We need Jesus for salvation because we cannot obey God on our own and we are all loved by God. Who remembers our big picture question from last week that I asked at the end of the video? That's right. It was, why does God want us to obey him? The answer is that obedience is our response to God's love for us. Some people may think that we obey God to earn his love, but that's backwards. God already loves us. When we understand that God loves us enough to save us from sin, we will desire to obey him and show our love for him. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the love that you showed us at the cross. We know that on our own, we cannot obey you. Help us surrender to your will, fill our hearts, and give us power to uh, have the Holy Spirit to be unified together for the sake of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And don't forget, our obedience is a response to God's love for us. Have a great week. See ya.